So Dean asked me earlier today, he was like, hey, Newsome, could you maybe make a video about like your top top list of the strongest candlestick patterns and their reversals? And I can do that. I can. But I'm going to give you a few other examples about what I like to see when, I, when a candle pattern um, occurs. Here is, I think, my list. And this list is for day trades and swing trades. This is both. That's what I like about candles. They're both very similar. The number one, in my opinion, and there's, a, there's really a 1A and a 1B. And then there's a 2. And again, there's a 2A and a 2B. And the reason I say that is because it sometimes does depend on the candle. Let's talk about the 1A. Probably the strongest candlestick pattern that you will ever find is the tweezer top and bottom. So let me see if I can write it in like this. Strongest candlestick pattern reversals in order probably goes like this 1a because there's a one one b is just tweezer top tweezer top tweezer bottom but the one a is tweezer top tweezer bottom with equal size candles. So we have here uh, Pandora. And so the reason I'm breaking into an educational video is because we're in a trade right now and it's either gonna work or it's not. I don't think we're gonna have another trade for the rest of the afternoon. If we can find one, we'll get into it. But if not, we'll make some money and that'll be that. So let me talk about tweezers. We're on a $13 stock, so it's gonna be pretty easy to find a tweezer top. Um, in fact, there's one right there. So there's a tweezer top and it's a bearish reversal pattern, right? So you get a bullish candle. So that's what the tweezer top and the tweezer bottom, you still have to follow the candle rules. So the tweezer bottom is a bearish candle followed by a bullish candle with equal lows. And then the tweezer top is the um, bullish candle followed by a bearish candle, right? With equal highs. So when the Candles are the same size. The candles I'm pointing to right there are tweezer top. The highs are the exact same. And that's what I look for when I, have, when I look for a tweezer top. I'm a, I'm a realist in that, in that aspect. You have some people who will say a tweezer top is a, a candle that has the exact same open and close of the prior candle, which is right here. So the close and the open of these candles are the exact same. Some people refer to that as a tweezer top. And I'm, I'm fine with that. It doesn't bother me. I'm not going to be like, you're wrong. I can easily see the benefits of that. But I don't call it a tweezer top. Tweezer top, by definition, is the exact same highs. So we have the same exact highs on these candles, but they're not the same size candles. When I say same size candles, I literally mean this candle and this candle, the lows and the highs are the exact same. That is the strongest one um, that, I, that I can think of, par none. Now, the only asterisk I can give on that is the candle pattern needs to shape up on a more expensive stock. The less expensive stock, the less it means. The less expensive stock, the less it means. I'm referring to candlesticks. I'm just talking about just the tweezer top and tweezer bottom. You'll see them a lot more on cheaper stocks when day trading. Okay, if you, It doesn't matter if it's a $13 stock and you see it on a swing trade. That's awesome. But when day trading, your cheaper stocks, you'll get your tweezer tops and tweezer bottoms more often because they don't move that much on the daily level. Okay, So something to consider. So if a tweezer top is not the same size, it's still strong and you can still see that it did break. You know, if you had this trade set up, you still factor in all the other aspects of trading, right? Risk, reward, support, resistance. So you have a tweezer top. If you're looking to scalp this one, just like, hey, boom, boom, you could have made a little bit of money. 
And notice that you would have gotten about a penny away from getting stopped out had you just kept that stop and then the trade just keeps rolling over. Um, it would have worked a little bit, but you still got to factor in everything else, right? Stop, and entry and stop. Low of the day is going to be a target. The risk reward is just not there. You take all that and just kind of go from there. He says, actually, I drew this on that tweezer. It would have gotten stopped out, though. Let me pull this up. Oh, by one cent. Yep, it did happen by one cent. Yep, yep, yep. Oh, so this is the exact tweezer you're looking at. Oh, okay, guys, that's great. So, so that's the thing. So that's the reason I wouldn't have taken that trade personally is because, again, it is a strong tweezer. It's on $13 stock, which means it's okay, but the candles are not the same size. Now, 1B, I will say that that is a very, very strong pattern, but then you take into consideration risk-reward. You don't take that trade. Okay. This, this exact candle pattern happening right here, and you get that candle pattern, uh, I would take it with that low, with the stop right there, but I would still prefer the candles to be the same size. Type it a one for those of you who are live, if that makes sense. It's the strongest candlestick pattern reversal that I can find or think of. Anytime I see those, I'll close my eyes and take that trade. All right, so um, we can try to find the tweezer bottom out here. Uh, like I said, it's really easy to find on bullish pattern or it's cheaper stock. So that's a tweezer bottom. They have the exact same low. And the candle size are the same as well. They have the same low and the same high. So even though you have a very, very, very small candle set right there, these candles do have the same high and same low. So let me come over here to Apple. And uh, again, it's a little bit more of an expensive stock. So it'll mean a little bit more as I talk about some of these patterns on Apple. So let's hop over here on Apple and our stock is breaking down bearish. This is great. So let me put this here. All right. So uh, let me just try to look through these. I'm gonna scan with my eyes. If I had a program I could do it for me, it'd be a little bit faster, but I'm just gonna scan with my eyes. I don't see a tweezer top or tweezer bottom off the top of my yeah, I don't see one right now. Let me keep looking. I'm going to keep looking. Um, I think we can, for educational purposes, if I can find one, that'd be great. This is close. This is probably, probably about as close as we're going to get, at least right now. This will work for educational purposes. So notice, uh, would you guys say these candles are pretty much the exact same size, right? They're very, very close. Let's pretend that this candle didn't have an upper wick, <laughs> all right? And it just had the exact same candle, uh, the same exact high. Here's how it entered the trade. Eyes closed, okay? Trigger, and again, let, it does have a wick, but let's just say it didn't have a wick. Stop will be above the high, all right? Now, again, take into consideration everything else on the chart, right? Your support. Uh, risk reward all that you still kind of take um, all that into consideration so you have to say all right well we have all of the uh, factors right with your candlestick patterns you still want to piece all of it together so that's your tweezer tweezer top right bullish candle stocks going down you get a bullish candle then you get a bearish candle with matching highs if they're the same size candles, they're gonna it's gonna move nicely. Take the low, the break of the low of that candle. Um, tweezer bottom is the same thing. So again, you take into you take into consideration risk reward. Let's say that right here is the tweezer bottom. Uh, your entry again, it's not it's not a perfect tweezer bottom, but something like this. Okay. So if this was a tweezer bottom, you uh, take it bullish above the high of that white candle again factoring in risk reward and all that jazz okay now there are different variations of tweezers right you can have bullish engulfing tweezers you can have um bearish harami tweezers there's a lot of tweezers that you can have uh, i really prefer tweezer candles with equal size candles i also if i had a comma here i could say a tweezer top or tweezer bottom that's a bullish engulfing So let's again hypothetically say that is a tweezer bottom right there. And again, it's not, right? It's not quite, but let's say it was. 
and it was a tweezer bottom and it fully engulfed that candle. I also like that, but again, I still provide, I still want to go with the equal size candles. All right. So there we go. Strongest candle re reversals. All right. So let's go do a 2A and a 2B. Uh, I think all of you guys will know what this one's going to be, right? If you want to take some guesses. One black crow, one white soldier. Now, the one black crow, one white soldier um, breaks. So I'll say breaks high or low of previous candle. Now, I will be able to find some of these. The reason I like number one the most, the tweezers, is because they're more rare. But number two, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I... I I've paid off credit cards trading just number two. Not as many as I want to, but I'm getting there. <laughs> but one black crows and one white soldiers, that's my go-to candlestick pattern because they do happen often. And I can see these all over the place. So let me just talk about for just a moment, uh, the one black crows, all that kind of good stuff. This candle pattern right here um, is a looks like well it actually prints as a one black crow on the screen numerically it's not let me see this one i'll be able to find one that one looks like one close open nope um close open no that's not one this is one on the screen even though it's not numerically i can see the difference it's just by like a fraction but it's there let's just pretend that's a one black crow so when I say 2A, one black crow that breaks the high or the low of the previous candle, if it's a one black crow, obviously the prior candle is going to be white. Would you guys agree? I mean, that's the definition and that's the way you want it to set up. You have a white candle and then you have a black candle, the following candle, and it takes out the low of the white candle. So it opens and, uh, I'm sorry, it opens below the prior candle's close and it closes below the prior candle's low. Okay, so let me pull up this one for Dean. And uh, yeah, so we're gonna get into this one in just a second. So there's your one black crow on, what is this, GPCPGX? All right, sweet. So again, there's gonna be, um, there's always gonna be trades that are not gonna work. And I can kind of give you, and I'm actually gonna go over to this one in just a second. And I can kind of give you how I would have waited on this one. Okay, uh, so there's your one black crow. But notice again, this one black crow takes out recent support. It forms a little pivot. It makes a little bit of a lower high and kind of rolls over. So let me go over here to Dean's current example, the one he just posted. Um, and I'm just going to use your chart, Dean, if that's okay. And again, this is, this is something that's going to take practice because there's no holy grail. As good of a candle reader as I think I am, there's still no holy grail of candlestick patterns. But there is one really important rule that I always live by. Whatever candles you're looking at, the size is important. Size matters <laughs> in the candle world, okay? Look at this bullish candle, and look at this bearish one black crow. Tell me the difference between the two. You want the one black crow to be bigger than the bearish, than the bullish candles. You do. You want the one black crow to really be like, hey, I'm here for the party, so to speak. I'm not saying that's a bad setup. We're gonna always have trades that we're gonna lose on. And true story, there are some times that you're not gonna be able to have an explanation. Sometimes you're gonna be like, you know what? I, I lost on this trade. There's nothing I can really do. It, it, there's no explanation. Like sometimes you're gonna get sick there's no, you know, you can do everything you can to prevent it. Sometimes it's just going to happen or, you know, whatever the case is. Sometimes things will just happen. That's just the cosmic forces or whatever you want to define it as. So GPCX, I'm not saying that you shouldn't have taken this trade. I actually like the trade and, you know, you lost on it. You mitigated your risk. We can see there's a very good thing that you mitigate your risk because the stock just kind of absolutely went bananas. On this trade, here's again how I would have played it. Uh, I, this is hindsight, but this is how I think I would have played it. Really big bullish candle. Boom, boom, broke this resistance right there. 
So we got a, a black a bearish candle, took it out. It's making higher highs and higher lows. So there's your one black crow. So I say to myself, okay, this is the beginning of a bearish trend. This is the support. I want this support to break. I want the stock to come down, trade sideways, and then break lower. Forming a, a lower high, the one black crow is the, hey, get ready for a trade type of candle in that situation. Now, let's notice um, this one black crow, right? Again, I don't know if it numerically is, but looking at the chart, this is also... I can see clearly that the open is below the close of that prior candle. That sometimes can be a data issue. We can see this is a $19 stock, so it's probably the exact same. But let's just pretend with our mind's eye that that is a legit one black row. Okay? Why wouldn't I take the break of the low of that candle, Dean? And the answer is the, it's the exact same reason. Notice this ginormous bullish candle right there. I would say, yep, guys, this is definitely one black crow. Let's get ready to make this happen. But unless it takes out that bullish candle, let's just wait. Let's wait because that candle is the real deal. Like it's, it's the bomb.com. And then you can look at all the prior data and say, boom, higher low, higher low, higher low. We're just keep making higher lows and higher lows. So you've got to, even one candle is not necessarily going to reverse the entire trend. And even when it does, you're not going to be able to catch it sometimes. I realize that's like the most frustrating thing in the world, but it will happen in the sense that even in hindsight, you can go back and go, okay, this is the candle that changed the trend. And based on that knowledge, you can determine how strong the trend change will be and therefore follow it. So you can go back in history and go, man, there was a one black crow right there. It broke that support. I think this is a strong trend change, which would give additional weight for a break of that support. But sometimes... You're not going to want to pick the or try to pick the top or the bottom based on one particular candle. If you will, I would try to prefer it be a tweezer. Um, but on intraday charts, like if this was a daily candle right here, you would you could still have made a little bit of money on that day, maybe exited as a day trade and you know before it reversed. But sometimes you're just going to be wrong. Sometimes you'll be wrong. There's really uh, no explanation for it at all. And the reason why, and I know I keep bringing up relationships, but to me, stock trading is a relationship because you're literally trading human emotions. Like I can look at uh, Apple right now in the five minute chart without looking at any other data at all and say that we're probably going to, very likely going to bounce a little bit because you're getting lower shadow, lower shadows. Uh, we came down and right there, we just bounced six, uh, four cents. You know, we could just roll over for the rest of the day. But for me, I'd be right on that because I'm like, okay, well, it came down, lower shadows, came down, lower shadows. It created a relative low. It's probably going to bounce at least a little bit because people are wanting to buy it down here. And if it doesn't, then people are going to be trapped. But you're looking at, there's literally someone in the world right now with that candle right there who just made or lost a lot of money. Just like this exact second time, and that's kind of a that's kind of a scary feeling to know that someone right there just made or lost some money right now. So you are trading human emotions, and that's the reason that some candlesticks, some chart patterns, some trades don't work because someone else in the world is doing something to the stock that might make, might make it change that one cent or that one penny or whatever that you're just not aware of, and that'll happen from time to time. So I would say the one, the second one is the one black crow, one white soldier um, breaks the high, the low of the previous candle. So here is again, um, open, close. This actually is a one white soldier right here by the by a penny. So this would fall into my 2B category, just a one black crow, one white soldier out of support. There you go. Just a regular old one black row, one white soldier. So this is a one white soldier. I don't know if it's out of support or not, but if you went injury, stop, I mean, there's an R. Right off of just one candle. Dean says a soldier or crow doesn't have to be the opposite color. It does, yes. It does have to be the opposite color. 
So you have to have a black candle followed by a white candle for a one white soldier or a white candle followed by a black candle to be a one black crow. So all of these, they have to have um, the similar candlestick patterns. They have to have the color associated with them. For those of you who might be watching this video uh, as a recording, somewhere on YouTube, somewhere in the world, wherever you might be, if you get a chance, you're welcome to hop over to reallifetraining.com and uh, take a sneak peek at the candlestick ebook. I know, Dean, you've already read it, um, but for those of you who haven't, it's really good. If you get a chance, check it out. You're gonna have a lot of information there, and of course, it is free. Uh, so that'll help uh, as well. <laughs> Dan says, just took Pandora for 2.2R during your recording. Nice, dude. Let me hop over to Pandora. I, I wish... Uh... Oh, yeah, nice little break. Nicely done, brother. Nicely done. So, uh, let me put this back on the board. There we go. One black crow, one white soldier, breaks the candle low with the candle high. Uh, one black crow, one white soldier out of support. Now, <clears throat> number three. So really there's gonna be a three, and there's really A's and B's to each one of these. I know this is very eccentric of me, but that's just the way they form because every candle is a little bit different if you want. So here's what we got. Three A, morning star, evening star reversal with third candle high low being the same as the first candle high low now this is going to be hard to find these, these are not very frequent not very common but let me do the best i can to find one of these um and i'm going to look on let's just look on the stock we're trading now <laughs> let's just do that come on baby break let's go man if this thing breaks it's going to run anyway let me see if i can find one no, can't really find one on this particular chart. I guess I'm just going to do my best to draw it, okay? Because th this, this is pretty rare. I do not see these very often, but if I do, it's almost like an eyes closed type of thing. Bullish candle, right? An evening star or a morning star. I'm going to draw an evening star, and then I'll draw a morning star. An evening star, it could, it could be an in, really the middle candle is an indecision candle of some kind. It could be anything. It could be a doji, high wave. It really doesn't necessarily matter some type of indecision candle but here's where the where it gets fun the third candle if it's at the same exact low of the first candle that's one of the strongest evening star reversal patterns you'll get entry is right below the lows of those candles stop is above the high of the pattern Okay, so you guys see that? And these can have wicks, it doesn't matter. You know, these, these can have wicks. As long as the lows, I mean, these can also have wicks. As long as the lows are the exact same. So you get a white, uh, a bullish candle followed by like an indecision candle followed by a bearish candle with the lows are the exact same. This one is very close to that pattern. Let me really, really zoom in here for, for, for those watching this as recording and or watching this live. Uh, I think I can take our trigger off now and just leave our stop. So this is very similar right there. So notice you get a bullish candle. Here's your indecision candle. Now if this wick was up just a little bit, let's say the wick stopped right there and this black candle came in and they had the exact same low, okay? They don't, it's still a bearish candle, right? I like that setup. I did not personally see this trade at the time. No, I did, this, this is the one we got in. Yeah, I did, okay, never mind. Um, Bearish entry could have been there and stock could have been there had you not taken that trade bearish already. We already got in on the retest. But you got a bullish candle, indecision candle, bearish candle. They're not the exact same low. If they were, that entry right there, again, wasn't phenomenal because of that target. But we were already in the trade on the pullback. We got in right here on the retest of this neckline. Boom, got in bearish, stop up there, target down there. Does that make sense, Dean? So again, bullish candle, indecision candle, bearish candle, bearish candle and bullish candle have the same low. That's the strongest evening star pattern that exists in my opinion. Morning star pattern is the exact same, but flipped. <laughs> bullish, uh, I'm sorry, bearish candle comes in, get a little bit of a 
bullish indecision candle of some kind, a little bit of a doji, high wave, something. Then you get a bullish candle with the exact same high as the bearish candle. Something like this and something like this. Your entry is above those wicks and your stop is below the pattern. Does that make sense? Type in a one if you guys, uh, if that makes sense to you, or if you have any questions at this point, feel free to let me know. It's you'll, you'll catch a pattern here, but it's uh, equal price action. That's the pattern that you're gonna see me uh, see me catch. Equal price action. So that's really kind of the key in all these candlestick patterns. If the highs are the same, the lows are the same on these patterns, right? There's not much stopping it. If it moves, it should move. That type of thing. Okay, so we have that. Um, since we're in this trade, let's actually do some money making stuff really quick. Uh, let's take the stop on this particular trade and move it down to $47.18. Okay, moving stop down on SNPS to 47.18. Next target is is still 46.33. Be okay with that taking the rest of the day. Don't know if it'll take that long, but if it does, be prepared for it. Just lock in some profit on SNPS. Okay, so let me hop back over here. And then 3B would just be morning star reversal, evening star reversal. Um, really, this is just before. This is not really a 4A or 4B. Bullish engulfing. Bullish engulfing. Bearish engulfing. I uh, did not spell engulfing right, apparently. Oh, it's with an F. Okay. Like, like phone is spelled with an F, apparently. Okay. Bullish engulfing and bearish engulfing. These are pretty uh, simplistic. Let me go find one on Kroger because Kroger is kind of bullish today. And here is a bullish engulfing candlestick pattern right there. All right, so stock is bouncing. It was a beautiful gap on the daily chart. Boom, boom, boom. Oh, by the way, uh, here's a morning star reversal pattern. And they almost had the same high. They don't by one cent. By one penny, they don't. On a $40 stock, that's pretty good. But you get this black candle, white indecision candle, white candle. The high this candle is 3907. The high this candle is 3908. You can see the trade still worked. But if that high was 3908, my entry would be 3910 by that low would have been my setup. So nice morning star reversal. Boom, boom, boom. Here's your bullish engulfing candle. So the trick is, not the trick, but the strength becomes, obviously it's a little bit better to happen out of support, but it doesn't have to. If you get a black candle and the next candle fully engulfs that candle, right, the whole candle body itself is inside, then depending on the location and obviously the setup, that setup would have been a little bit aggressive for sure. Entry above the entry above that candle stop below there, but as you can see, the trade did work. Um, I wouldn't have taken that trade personally. I probably would have waited for a breakout and a retest and just never got it, so it just continued. But bullish engulfing, bearish engulfing are um, the two favorite for me. And then the rest, I really don't trade, honestly. Those are, uh, for day trading at least, those are probably the strongest ones I look for. Uh, if you want me to break it down, the rest would be um, bullish counterattack, dark cloud cover, as it's called. That's really one of the weaker ones to me because really what five does oftentimes is just end up becoming one of the three A or three B. If you get a bullish counterattack or dark cloud cover, it usually just becomes a morning or evening story reversal and you just kind of can play it from there. Uh, am I forgetting any? Rest after battle pattern, that's really a continuation pattern. Individual candles, I'm not the biggest on individual candles. Really, I like to pair them if they're going to be a strong reversal. You know, if it's a hammer, great, but I'd really want the hammer candle to really 
show some uh, show some gusto. So if you're saying hammer or shooting star, I would prefer to pattern it with an evening star. I, I really rarely just play a single candle. I really do. Uh, let me try to give an example. Um, I would say in day trading land. In day trading land, that's really, these are the five. In swing trading, I can play an individual candle, like a hammer or a shooting star. If, um, I, can, I can type this in, so we'll make it number six. Okay, six. Individually strong candle, hammer, shooting star. If it's at a confirmed support or resistance. What do you feel about that, Dean? Does that make sense? So if it's just happening at no man's land, like, oh, we've never been this high before, and you get a shooting star, nah, it doesn't make that much sense to me. You know, same thing with a hammer. You know, if we've if we're at an all time low, um, and we we just never been that far, and we get a hammer, I don't really love it. If if we just get one nice hammer at a confirmed resi at a confirmed support, sure, I can take that individual candle. If that hammer, right? If that hammer is also a one white soldier or a tweezer of some kind, then yeah, sure, it starts adding. So I would prefer to make as many candle patterns as possible, up to three. Uh, if I get more than three, like it just becomes a little bit of a gift, right? If I get a morning star pattern that the fourth and the fifth candle don't trigger, but they're very, very small candles, and the pressure you can see is building, then that's just kind of like an addition. It just makes it uh, even better. So those are really off the top of my head. That's that's it. That's the list, uh, the the strongest ones, and what we find most often in day trading land are 3A and 3B. We take a little bit of fours. Every, we get pretty excited about tweezer tops and tweezer bottoms sometimes. Uh, again, if it's the similar low. So notice right here on Kroger, we have a perfect tweezer top, which on a $40 stock is a pretty big deal. Not the same size though, so it's a 1B, if you will. It's at an it's at an all-time high on Kroger, number one. Number two, it's happening after a very, very, very strong trend. Would I have taken that bearish if I was sitting here watching Kroger all day? Probably. Honestly, I probably would have taken that. I didn't, as you guys know, but could have. So you're looking at this candle, and you're saying, well, Jeremy, what about this candle? Well, this is not a tweezer top. This is a bearish engulfing pattern, and it's not nearly strong enough for me to say, okay, I'm gonna take this bearish with a move lower. Why? Boing, that candle. Huge bullish candle right in front of it. I mean, right beside it is a very, very strong hammer. So up in this area, the reason I'd be okay taking this is because it's a perfect tweezer top. I mean, it's flawless. At the high of the day, at an all time high. Kroger's never been that high. And the bullish candles um, in front of it, you know, you got to about here. And that's where the that's where the buying pressure kind of lets off, and uh, you know the risk reward for that makes sense. If you had to rate this as a one to 10, 10 being the most perfect tweezer top of all time, perfect location, perfect setup, I'd rate it like a high eight or a low nine because they're not equal size. If they were equal size, I would take the trade and I wouldn't even think twice about it, right? Because if they were equal size, then this candle would be the same size as that giant bullish candle right there. And I'd feel like, okay, what's well, at least gonna move down into here? So let's go look at the SPY. Dean says SPY is the 15 minute right now. Let's go check it out. Here is SPY. So SPY, uh, so let's talk about this evening star. Let's, let's do this real time data. By the way, here's a little bit of a new black crow, which is not a, you can more or less say it's a one black crow, but it's not definition wise. Um, so this evening star, let's talk about what I do and do not like about this evening star reversal. Number one, the thing I do like about it, I like the doji in the middle. <clears throat> Number two, I like it that it's uh, forming at a prior resistance. So those are the things I like about it. Let's talk about the th things I don't like about it. Number one, this candle is pretty big. Number two, that candle has more volume um, than the doji. Not a big fan of that. 
Number two, uh, number three, if you were to take it bearish, uh, you would take it bearish below the low of that bullish candle and the risk reward doesn't make any sense. Now, if we got this bearish candle that came down to the exact same low as the white candle, that would be a very strong evening star reversal, but risk to reward still doesn't make a lot of sense. Okay. So now if we flipped it the opposite direction, we said, could this be a inverted head and shoulders or a triple bottom? I would say potentially. Are there any really strong reversal candles down here? Mm, not really. So in order, you know, so this is an okay morning star reversal pattern. Uh, the candles don't have the same high right there. This white one and this bullish one. This one, again, is an okay bullish reversal. So you got some wicks right here. I'd want to close above 207.16 to go bullish. And then the problem with that is you got a resistance right there that's going to get a little bit of the way. So then I'd want to close above here. And then that makes the risk reward not that great. So you piece all those things together and you more or less say, all right, probably not going to trade SPY right now. And that's really what you come down to. So if we're going to start going into uh, chart patterns, I think that's a different recording for a different day, maybe tomorrow. So chart patterns are built from candles. I can definitely give you those. But again, those are really going to be, I think what, what I really probably need to do at some point in my life is create a list of the strongest patterns, how I like them to form. And even the strongest patterns, you still have trades that uh, won't work. But it really just kind of depends on, um, again, risk reward and location, all that kind of good stuff. I think head and shoulder patterns uh, are actually one of my least favorite. One of my least favorite patterns. Uh, double bottoms and double tops, probably my uh, top favorite. One of, yeah, one of my top favorite patterns, double top, double bottom. Head and shoulders, uh, they're okay. They take a long time to work, but they're okay. Um, probably my second favorite pattern, candlestick pattern, is the uh, descending triangle or the ascending triangle, depending on the location, or the pennant. Those are probably my other favorite. Those are probably my top two favorite. Cool. Does that help, Dean? Do you have any other um, any other questions about candlesticks uh, as it relates to like their significance or their strength while we're here? That's a very valid question, man. I mean, that's the thing. We're always here to learn. And I, I'm always willing to change my opinion and my take on things. But it's just one of those situations where you, you know, you hone your craft. Uh, again, yesterday on SPY was a one black crow. It was a one black crow candle. And I said if I got stopped out, which I did, that we'd likely head a little bit lower and probably pull into the 205. So once that began to happen, once that candle shaped up, I ended my bullish regime, regime if you will. And just was happy with, we're going to go neutral. We're going to be sideways. Awesome job, man. Great question. Hope everyone else learned from it. Again, if you have any questions, if you're watching this from recording and you ever want to chat, feel free to email me anytime. Jeremy at reallifetrain.com. You can also follow me on Twitter at Newsome Nuggets. Sweet.